Hi Emerson, just call me Gigi. Today we're going to work with the vowels. We're going to start with the letter A, which can say its own name, A, A, but it can also make the sound of ah, ah. So watch my tongue, ah. I'm going to give you a really easy way to remember the ah sound when you see an A in a word. And then we're going to read a book, Two Bad Ants, one of our favorites. Emerson, here's one of our favorite books, Two Bad Ants. So the word bad has the short A, ah, b, ad, bad. I really don't want you to learn how to read by going bleh all the time. So I'm overdoing it. So remember, ah, that's the short A sound. I'm gonna use this as your picture clue. Two Bad Ants by Chris Van Allsburg. The news traveled swiftly through the tunnels of the ant world. A scout had returned with a remarkable discovery, a beautiful sparkling crystal. When the scout presented the crystal to the ant queen, she took a small bite, then quickly ate the entire thing. She deemed it the most delicious food she had ever tasted. Nothing could make her happier than to have more, much more. The ants understood. They were eager to gather more crystals because the queen was the mother of them all. Her happiness made the whole ant nest a happy place. It was late in the day when they departed. Long shadows stretched over the entrance to the ant kingdom. One by one, the insects climbed out, following the scout, who had made it clear there were many crystals where the first one had been found, but the journey was long and dangerous. They marched into the woods that surrounded their underground home. Dusk turned to twilight, twilight to night. The path they followed twisted and turned, every bend leading them deeper into the dark forest. More than once, the line of ants stopped and anxiously listened for the sounds of hungry spiders. But all they heard was the call of crickets echoing through the woods like distant thunder. Dew formed on the leaves above. Without warning, huge cold drops fell on the marching ants. A firefly passed overhead that for an instant lit up the woods with a blinding flash of blue-green light. <clears throat> At the edge of the forest stood a mountain. The ants looked up and could not see its peak. It seemed to reach right to the heavens, but they did not stop. Up the side they climbed, higher and higher. The wind whistled through the cracks of the mountain's face. The ants could feel its force bending their delicate antenna. Their legs grew weak as they struggled upward. At last, they reached a ledge and called crawled through a narrow tunnel. Here they come. When the ants came out of the tunnel, they found themselves in a strange world. Smells they had known all their lives, smells of dirt and grass and rotting plants had vanished. There was no more wind and most puzzling of all, it seemed like the sky was gone. They crossed smooth, shiny surfaces and followed the scout up a glassy curved wall. They had reached their goal, 
From the top of the wall, they look below to a sea of crystals. One by one, the ants climbed down into the sparkling treasure. Quickly, they each chose a crystal and then turned to start the journey home. There was something about this unnatural place that made the ants nervous. In fact, they left in such a hurry that none of them noticed that two small ants had stayed behind. Why should we go back? One asked the other. This place may not feel like home, but look at all these crystals. You're right, said the other. We can stay here and eat this tasty treasure every day forever. So the two ants ate crystal after crystal until they were too full to move and they fell asleep. Daylight came. The sleeping ants were unaware of the changes taking place in their newfound home. A giant silver scoop hovered above them and plunged deep into the crystals. It shoveled up and down both ants and crystals and carried them high into the air. The ants were wide awake when the scoop turned and dropped them from a frightening height. They tumbled through space in a shower of crystals and fell into a boiling brown lake. Then the giant scoop stirred violently back and forth. Crushing waves fell over the ants. They paddled hard, hard to keep their tiny heads above water, but the scoop kept spinning the hot brown liquid. Around and around it went, creating a whirlpool that sucked the ants deeper and deeper. They both held their breath and finally bobbed to the surface, gasping for air and spitting mouthfuls of the terrible bitter water. <laughs> Emerson, I love this picture. Look at this. Then the lake tilted and began to empty into a cave. The ants could hear the rushing water and felt themselves pulled toward the pitch black hole. Suddenly the cave disappeared and the lake became calm. The ants swam to the shore and found that the lake had steep sides. They hurried down the walls that held back the lake. The frightened insects looked for a place to hide, worried that the giant scoop might shovel them up again. Close by, they found a huge round disk with holes that could neatly hide them. But as soon as they had climbed inside their hiding place, but as soon as they had climbed inside, their hiding place was lifted, tilted, and lowered into a dark space. When the ants climbed out of the holes, they were surrounded by a strange red glow. It seemed to them that every second the temperature was rising. It soon became so unbearably hot that they thought they would soon be cooked. But suddenly the disc they were standing on rocketed upward and the two hot ants went flying through the air. They landed near what seemed to be a fountain, a waterfall pouring from a silver tube. Both ants had a powerful thirst and longed to dip their feverish heads into the refreshing water. They quickly climbed along the tube. As they got closer to the rushing water, the ants felt a cool spray. They tightly gripped the shiny surface of the fountain and slowly leaned their heads into the falling stream. But the force of the water was much too strong.
The tiny insects were pulled off the fountain and plunged down into a wet, dark chamber. They landed on half-eaten fruit and other soggy things. Suddenly, the air was filled with loud, frightening noises. The chamber began to spin. The ants were caught in a whirling storm of shredded food and stinging rain. Then, just as quickly as it had started, the noise and the spinning stopped. Bruised and dizzy, the ants climbed out of the chamber. Oh no. In daylight, once again, they raced through puddles and up a smooth metal wall. In the distance, they saw something comforting two long, narrow holes that reminded them of the warmth and safety of their old underground home. They climbed up into the darkened openings. But there was no safety inside these holes. A strange force passed through the wet ants. They were stunned, senseless, and blown out of the holes like bullets from a gun. When they landed, the tiny insects were too exhausted to go on. They crawled into a dark corner and fell fast asleep. Night had returned when the battered ants woke up to a familiar sound. The footsteps of their fellow insects returning for more crystals. The two ants slipped quietly to the end of the line. They climbed the glassy wall and once again stood amid the treasure. But this time they each chose a single crystal and followed their friends home. Standing at the edge of their ant hole, the two ants listened to the joyful sounds that came from below. They knew how grateful their mother queen would be when they gave her their crystals. At that moment, the two ants felt happier than they'd ever felt before. This was their home. This was their family. This was where they were meant to be. The end. Two bad ants. Okay, Emerson, here's the short A sound. Ah. Here's the word bad. B. Ah. D. Oops. <laughs> My first one. B. B. Ah. Wait a minute. I'm going to get my tongue. B. But ah, uh, but ad, bad.